Welcome to Journey in Entrepreneurship. This is Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. And I, of course, am super excited to be bringing you another installment of yet another amazing woman of color who is talking about their own personal journey in entrepreneurship. Today, we are going to be talking to Lolita Harris. She is a stylist, relationship, personal development coach, and you know, all this week I've been coming to you, bringing to you amazing stories about people in their own personal journey. And so as we move forward, what I want to rem want you to remember is everyone has their own journey and everyone's story is different. So hopefully you're going to get great tips and recommendations throughout the week continued as we um, move on. And with that, Lolita, I'm so super excited to have you here. How are you doing? I am doing amazing and so excited about just being able to once again pour into other amazing people doing amazing things, making great impact. So I'm just excited. Like, what can I do to help? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. You know, we've known each other for so many years and um, I love to hear you speak and I love to hear, I love talking to you. So we're going to get started. And so the first thing I want to know, because I know your journey, I know a lot about you, but the people don't. So let's talk about how long have you been an entrepreneur? So I have been an entrepreneur in the beauty industry for now 28 years. It has been amazing. <laughs> um, and, and one of the things that I will speak as it relates to entrepreneurship is that you are not the one thing that you want to do. So there are many things within you that you discover as you start doing what God says to do first. Right. So my That's first right. thing was being behind the chair, but being behind the chair gave me access to women and having that access to women, women opened up their lives and gave me an opportunity to impact their lives for good with encouragement. So I've been doing that for 28 years. But then in 2014, I felt led to go in a different direction. And while still doing the beauty industry and maintaining my clientele there, I launched my, um, my um, private practice and coaching. And so with that, I, um, I've been doing that for five years. And so wow. it has been phenomenal, but it has for real, real been a balancing act. Yes. <laughs> So, and what, what is great about your story, Lolita, is, is that you do actually have, I mean, you had a thrive, you still have a very thriving salon uh, business and then you're building up a coaching business as well. So, you know, and you were at different stages in your life in each of those. What was the thing that made you jump into one versus the other? Because they are totally different industries. What made you decide to jump? So, um, actually, I was going to talk about what made me jump from um, the, the working environment as it relates to corporate or whatever. I was in the medical field. Okay. And, um, and that was amazing because my thing is always about helping people to grow from the inside out. Yep. So, here I am in this... Uh, Northwestern Memorial Hospital um, in Chicago, Illinois, where I'm from originally. And I have this um, situation where a gentleman had expired and I had gone into his room and I think that I was just about done with the people dying. Like that right. was really yeah. overwhelming to me in that moment. Well, I happened to go after that experience and I went to go get my hair done. This is while still living in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So I go to get my hair done and my stylist, her, um, her assistant wasn't there. So my stylist asked me if I could help her to get out of this jam that she was in. Mm -hmm. And she had no idea that I had mad skills already. <laughs> And if you don't know Lolita, Lolita still got some mad skills. Let me just say that Lolita, you know, know. <laughs> she's on both ends of the spectrum, mad skilled at everything that she does. And well, so I'll and just stop at that. <laughs> thank you so much, Sunday. 
but I am, I am very, very humbled by your compliment because um, I don't always feel like I'm doing my very best or I don't really always feel like I'm making my impact. So just that uh, seed of encouragement was very well, well appreciated. I, if you ever need any seeds, just ping me because... <laughs> You are a mad skilled woman in all that you touch. So um. thank you so much. But the thing is that I love people and in loving people, I said yes to my stylist. I helped her out that day and she hired me and fired her assistant. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it sucks not to show up to work. <laughs> But it opened up a window of opportunity for me to be in a different environment because I ha I'm i very, very high energy. I love people. Now, when I'm at home, I like to chill, have some solitude, got to, you know, recalibrate. <laughs> you know? But <laughs> so. it takes a lot of energy to re uh, to re-energize, to be able to pour into people in the manner that you do. So I can understand needing to have that quiet time at home. Yes, and that is a very important key, and we'll get back to that. So, um, so I said yes to the opportunity, and I gave my two week notice to um, to the hospital like and the history. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, when I uh, jumped into doing it for myself, it took a little time because fear overcame. Oh goodness, fear. You know, so it was fine to support someone else and be an assistant. But when God said, hey, this is a way for you to go. Yeah. And you know a little, you know a lot about my story, but I was married to a, um, a professional football player for 18 years. And so um, while I am no longer married to him, this um, line of work, was definitely um, right in alignment with God's plan for my life because only God knew that it would go the way that it did. But having the lifestyle of being a professional athlete's wife, you had to find uh, creative ways of keeping your game tight. Yeah. in the industry right so living in different states and everything my clients would still want me to do their hair when i came home yeah so it was just um it was just a constant reflection of you are good enough even when i didn't feel like i was good enough so what i want to say to the women on the other side of this camera is that never allow fear to overcome you hop over the hurdle called fear and do it anyway do it afraid like i did i did it afraid i didn't know what the outcome was gonna be but here i land 28 years later I'm still in the game. Game still tight. <laughs> it's you look fabulous. You look fabulous <laughs> in the game. Like I just I love you so much. Um, okay, so you decided to jump, and you know, in five years, you know, five years ago, you decided to jump again, right? And so, uh, you know, normally I wouldn't go there, but I, I love you, and I know that story is a powerful story too that I would love people to hear as well. So you decided to jump a second time in a thriving business to start another business. And what was the catalyst for that? So um, the thing about navigating the hard life coaching is the name of my business, my coaching business. And so what I realized is that that was what I was doing behind the chair. I was helping people understand what was going on in their lives and how to jump over some of those hurdles of fear and doubt and shame and you know i don't feel so amazing all the time and you know what giving people permission to be human because sometimes what people don't realize is that you know what you're not doing nothing different you're mm -hmm. doing what's normal yeah. you know and so that's why what you're doing right now is so vital because sometimes when people feel like they're not good enough and they are failing or whatever, you have these kind of talks and it exposes the truth. That's that, right. Hey, you know what? we all have a point where things, there's a starting point, 
you know, so just because you see the glory here doesn't mean that there wasn't a struggle along the journey. That's to right. Get and so I'm just, um, I'm grateful that I had the experiences that I did behind the chair because it was behind the chair that I had this new vision, a grander vision that I was not going to no longer just transform people from the outside, but there was some internal work that women had to do on themselves. And so that's where Girl Talk came from. That's right. So, that's, I love that. I love that. I love that. Okay. Yeah. So you've been on a journey, thir almost 30 years, um, at two different businesses that you are currently still on. And you've touched a little bit about that, but let's talk a little bit more. What are two, th two or three main things that you would like to talk about in terms of struggles or lessons learned that you had when you first started? So one of the things that I would definitely say is the work-life balance mm -hmm. is key in entrepreneurial shift. Yeah, that's a good um, I think that entrepreneurs can often because you your foundation and your everything is you everything rests on you so without you pretty much nothing happens mm -hmm. you know unless you have a team of people so in entrepreneurship we have to learn how to manage our relationships uh, with our families, we have to learn how to take time out to take care of number one. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, that's a good one. <laughs> Girl, I know. <laughs> so, but this is what we have to do, ladies. I mean, we really have to do this thing. We have to take time out for us because we take care of the whole world. We take care of our, our children. We take care of our men. Many of us in these circles, we are leaders outside of our homes. And so as an entrepreneur, you are a leader. You know, um, you are launching a vision and doing it different and setting yourself apart from everyone else. And that takes a lot of time and investment. Um, another thing that I would say is not just taking time to take care of yourself, spend time with family, but take time to have fun. Yes. Having fun That's is such a good one. Hello, yes. somebody. <laughs> oh, it is essential. That's right. It is essential to our success because um, if we are only pouring into our business um, without the balance of fun, then it makes us our life pretty freaking boring. That's right. And That's right. all of us need to smile again. We need to be rejuvenized. <laughs> Is that a I, I don't know, but I like it because it, it, that's, I know exactly the feeling that exact, <laughs> rejuvenized is the new word of the day. <laughs> we need to do it. We got to get for real about this thing. So yes. Yeah, so those are the things that I would say. So in the work life balance, um, making sure that you take care of yourself, spending time with family and friends and making sure that you have fun. Um, another thing if you are successful, like I was, in the beauty industry or any other industry, if your business just launches and takes off and you soar, please get a financial advisor. Amen to that. <laughs> you know, no one's really, I actually have a lady who's going to be speaking and she, that's all she does is financial advising and planning and mm -hmm. all that. But that is, I think, something that we don't talk about enough. Um, I, and I'm glad that you brought it up because it's true. You're going to start making money. Um, and for some, it may be more money than you've ever made. Or for some, you've got to manage it differently because you're not getting a paycheck. And how do you do that? You know, how, like, so whatever it is, there's some sort of financial component. Um, and if that's not your superpower, you need to get somebody to help you. That's a great one. That's a great one. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I think last I would just say time management. Mm. Um, time management is of the essence because so often when you work in corporate America or if you work for someone else, they usually um, 
a lot your time for you. You yes. know that you're going to owe them this amount of time and you're going to be paid this amount. Well, in entrepreneurship, that is not etched in stone. But because of the other things that I talked about in work-life balance, if you do not manage your time well, you will be like I was and you will miss everything that is important to you. Oh my goodness. Of work. That's so true. Cause, um, I, you know, and I don't, so I can't speak cause I'm not Caucasian, but I can speak as an African American woman that mm -hmm. you know, we are, we are just, I mean, I think we come out the womb hustling, right? That's what we are taught to do. We are taught to be everybody's everybody. And, um, you know, when you get into your own business, I mean, you're doing that with a vengeance, right? And everything mm -hmm. potentially does get sacrificed as a result of that. Um, unless, you, of course, you do what you recommended, which is have that white work-life balance. Um, and so I think that those are great, great items to discuss in terms of lessons learned. So, you know, now you've been in it and you've done it. And now I've got people in my community who are most of my, well, my community are either existing or future travelpreneurs in the travel industry. Um, what are some recommendations that you have above what you've already discussed in terms of struggles for somebody who's thinking about, who's new, they've, they've not jumped and they're about to jump. What are some of the things that you would recommend for them? So, okay. I, I have more than what you want, but if I could, <laughs> something in the right now so the first thing that I would say is get a mentor for that. what it is that you want to do any in any business that you're going to go into a mentor allows you the ability to save on time money and a whole bunch of hiccups that could cost you in both time and money That's right. so That's right. When you have someone who has already done what you have done, it accelerates your ability to be successful. That's so right. That's right. mentorship is number one. Number two, I would have to say, is to be patient uh, with the process. Amen to that one. <laughs> yes. so being patient with the process means a lot. Um, because if you are not patient and you rush the process, there are so many uh, significant things that you have an opportunity to miss on your way up the ladder of su to success. That's right. And without those building blocks, you will not continue to go up. The <laughs> But you might stay here and go down. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> a little, and so um, in um, in many businesses, it usually don't look like this. You just climb straight up. A lot of the times, it's very loopy and up and down. And through these things, you are learning different things. So do not despise small beginnings, but do be very patient yet diligent in what God has given you to do. Because if you are an entrepreneur, you are an answer to somebody's problem. Yes. So yes. whatever that is, whatever that looks like, um, whatever it is that you need that you are lacking, seek it out so that you can get it. But be patient nonetheless through the process. I love that. Um, and you know, that is certainly what helped spurred me to want to do this journey in entrepreneurship, because I think we need to see other women, other black women who mm -hmm. are going through that journey, because I think that we're underrepresented in, um, in social media and other different platforms to see that there are many of us black women who are going through this and it's not a quick rise, right? It's not a, you know, boom. And if you look at, cause I was telling somebody the other day, if you look at Facebook ads, Facebook ads will have you believing you can make a million dollars in like two weeks, right? You just like, boom, I'm going to buy this program and I'm going to be a million dollars and I'm, that's it. And that's not the way it is. <laughs> so um, patience is definitely critically needed. <laughs> it is. There is, there are two other things and I won't really deep dive into these, but I think that they are ex essential to your question. And so the first thing is, to just really be sure that 
um, in your entrepreneurship journey that you are making sure you prepare for the things you can't control. Oh, I like so that. Life happens and we will have interruptions. I recently had to be the caregiver for my grandfather and, um, and he recently passed on. Well, what I didn't do is that, well, I was prepared and I did have savings, but as you start dipping into your savings because you're not able to really be present at work, you know, you're valuing the time that you're spending with your, your uh, parent, your child, whatever it is. Yes. So let it be divorce, let it be illness on your behalf, let it be uh, death in your family, whatever the case may be, life happens, these things are gonna happen, friends. And so we have to prepare, not just our hearts, not just our minds, but our pocketbooks. That's we right. have to prepare. So in this season of my life, I am putting in more time into my work because I have some recovering to do, friends. That's right, yes. <laughs> so that's, the, that's the bottom line. So that is very important. I think that it's important to prepare financially for the mishaps that can happen, not just in business, but in your personal life that could impact. That could disrupt. Huh? That could disrupt your workflow. Yeah. Exactly. 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 And then finally, um, I just want to share the importance of when you are doing business, if you are an entrepreneur and you are going in business with another individual or another group collectively, be sure that you hire an attorney to guide you in the right direction for your better interest. Because unfortunately, what can happen sometimes is that we, I mean, everybody start off excited on the same mm -hmm. page blah, 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 but that can really, it can get different as time moves along and people can change their mind about different things. People can pass away. People can decide that this doesn't work and they fall back. So what happens to the business? Those are the things that you have to do. So if you are in partnership, have legal counsel for that as well, yes, so yes. that you are not left holding the bag and you don't know what to do. We have a tendency to not handle these things prior to getting into business. And so just making sure that we are taking care of the 360 degree of business as it relates to us, the business entity, because when you think about business as an entrepreneur, it is also you as an individual. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. so these things are just, it's, it's just very important. And I thought that they would be essential to the conversation. So I hope that's helpful for someone out there. I believe absolutely it is. You know, um, when, when you talk about legal counsel, I think it's equally as important as insurance. We just recently did a training last month on travel insurance for your business. So not for your customers, but for your mm -hmm. business. And I think as business owners, we jump into doing a business, but we don't get the professional superpower help of the people that we need to protect us. Insurance is one of them. Legal counsel is another another financial advise advisement is another I mean unless those are your superpowers then you need to find professionals who have your best interest at heart um, to do that and don't take it lightly I think those are very important topics for us business owners to do to, to consider as we start businesses so Absolutely. those are great recommendations so let's talk a little bit more about navigating the heart um, mm -hmm. and what, how someone can work with you or what we can expect from you. What do you got going on in your queue? Let's talk about you. Okay. So about me. So uh, like I said, I'm still behind the chair, but I'm only behind the chair part time now. So I am continuing to go, um, in the direction of coaching. I'm still building my business. And so um, because of the life interruption, Girl Talk had to kind of um, fall back. 
And so Girl Talk is, I am working on a Girl Talk conference. I am working on Girl Talk, the book. And I am... Um, so what is that? Uh, Tell the audience what Girl Talk is. I know what okay. it is, but what are they? No, what is it? <laughs> okay. Um, so Girl Talk was... Uh, um, well, Girl Talk still is. It is an entity... Um, it is an event. It was a monthly event that I had started in 2017, and it just, it launched really well. It did really well, um, but I was doing them across the U.S., but every month I did them both here in Dallas and in Chicago. And so this community of women were women that would be dealing with a specific kind of issue within and so um the 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 platform was for us to build community for us to understand that we are not alone in our struggles and that is another lie of the enemy that um when we are isolated we feel like we're alone but to create that community so that you can have support in that thing that you might be going through. But then myself as the coach for those who wanted to do deeper work mm -hmm. so that they could release some of those things that are going on within to help them to be their best self so that they are better in every area of their lives. Because sometimes even in business, we are not successful because of the way we see us. So when I look mm -hmm. in the mirror right here, I'm saying, Hey, do I like her? Is she beautiful to me? Is she capable? My answer is yes to all of the above. But guess what, my friends? It wasn't always the case. That's right. It wasn't always the case. And so I myself, I had to deal with some of those childhood issues. Mm -hmm. I had to deal with some of those things that people had spoken over my life. Oh, you so fast. You're going to be the first one to have kids. And I wasn't. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, I have, I have, um, I have overcome so many different things. And because I know that uh, navigating change is possible with the right help, with the proper support, you really can get to the next level because I know that. And because I did make the investment in myself you have a better product today. Now, I am not saying that I am perfect because I am still yet working on me daily. Daily. You know, so um, as we continue to make steps in life and as we continue to do things in life, we have to always come back at one, the man in the mirror. So you've got Girl Talk that you're getting back online again. Are you going to continue doing them in the, you know, from a selfish perspective, I'm in the DFW area. Are you going to continue to do them in DFW or are you changing what your uh, plan is for that? So, yes. So what I'm trying to do more now is partnership. Okay. So um, organizations and that, that, um, that really help women. I am trying to do more speaking at those in those environments, but I am the the plan in right now, without life interruptions, <laughs> and just right here in the moment. My goal is to relaunch Girl Talk in Dallas and Chicago, January twenty twenty. Awesome, and that's right around the corner. So, well. All right. That's great. So how can someone get in contact with you? I've got all of the information is in this post. So your links and all of that, but do you do one-on-one -on -one coaching? What do you do? If somebody wants, they, they feel moved by your message today, what would you be, what would you be your recommendation? So yes. So if you are interested in reaching out to me, you can always reach me uh, via email at Lolita at navigating the heart.com. That is also my website, www.navigatingtheheart.com. Um, there at navigatingtheheart.com, you can also get my book. I did a collaborative effort um, called Roses and Thorns in uh, 2016 with some amazing women. We had some really amazing topics 
my contributions were to uh, divorce and recovering after divorce, as well as blended families. The book is phenomenal and you can purchase it on my website. It is no longer available anywhere else, um, but you can still get it there. So if you are interested, please do. Um, and I and I would love to hear your comments about it because it is a phenomenal read. That's awesome. <laughs> With some great stories in it. So, um, so yeah, so you can reach me there, but you can also, I'm available and you can reach me. There are no excuses about anything. You can, <laughs> I love that. I'm accessible. <laughs> and, and Lolita, you know, like I know, I know Lolita, like it, I, I guess we've known each other now. It's been a long time. I don't even remember what year it was. I want to say 2006, maybe. Um, yeah, ish. 2006 ish <laughs> is right when I moved to this area. Um, and so, what you're going to get from Lolita, she's going to shoot from the hip. She's going to tell you how it is, but she's going to do it in love and in kindness. Um, and I've experienced both of her services, both her hair services and her coaching services, and they have both been phenomenal. So um, I uh, thank you so much for taking the time, Lolita, to uh, talk to my community um, and to pour into us. And um, if you'd like to reach Lolita, she's giving you her contact in information. And with that, we will talk soon. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>